Right now, I'm stood in an abandoned medieval village in North Oxfordshire. Turns out there's quite a few of these in Oxfordshire. This one, however, contains a bit of a secret in those woods just back there, which may help explain the existence of this abandoned settlement. We'll come back to that towards the end of the video, but in the meantime, let's have a look at some of these other abandoned settlements and see if there's anything that connects them all. Pick up an old OS map and you'll probably be able to find without great difficulty Bandon Settlement, probably one close to your home, not just one. There seems to be hundreds scattered across the country. Now each and every one tells its own story, it tells a lifetime of struggles and change, all shaping the life that we lead today. In the last few months, the abandoned settlements of Oxfordshire have become a little bit of a fascination with me. Why are they abandoned and what caused a change from a thriving community to a long forgotten landscape? And above all, was there a connection that would help us piece this mystery together? Part one was to list them all, gather all the information we could, and then, well, maybe make a map. So here we have a basic map of Oxfordshire, and now we've plotted all the abandoned settlements that we can find. I think there's around 10 that are fairly obvious. Now, with that, we have marked in green those that are accessible. So let's start our journey here in the west in Tilgarsley and see what we can find. So I'm on the hunt for a village or an abandoned settlement called Tilgarsley. Now the year is 1390. The abbot here was noted for storing hay for his own use at Le Bold. Now Le Bold broadly could translate to old buildings or dwellings. Now that could then give rise to the farm that's still here today, Bowles Farm. And I think it's just up ahead. Now, despite there being a lot of conjecture, one problem we have is nobody knows exactly where it is. Now, as I've mentioned, many have summarised that, well, the Bowles Farm and Le Bold add up, so it was probably underneath that site there. There is more conjecture that it's across the road at Cuckoo Farm, but all that remains a mystery for one reason. 1359 and the abbot here on the farm was alone. Now that's really curious because just 30 years earlier in 1327 this was a thriving community that was actually bigger than the village that still stands today of Eensham. Perhaps we can conclude that maybe the plague hit the population here quite hard. Now I'm faced today was a classic private, no public right of way, no footpath, when there is actually a footpath through there, so uh, see how far we get. Records from the early 1800s refer to the field to the immediate south of here as churchyard field, apparently on account of the number of cut stones and bones that were found here. So do those stones and bones refer to a churchyard in the sense that we know today, or perhaps they refer to bones that were from ancient times in an ancient burial land. I guess we're not going to know if we don't even know where the village is. We do know it existed and we can probably put it down to uh, dispersion because of the Black Death of 1348. Well, I told you, right behind the camera now, you're looking at a Roman villa you might think I'm quite mad. Let me come and show you what I mean. Okay, so for the more eagle-eyed, you'll probably realise that's an old chapel and there's nothing for miles in every direction. There's one small house just down there in the valley, but my east, my west, north, absolutely nothing apart from evidence of some platforms where there were probably some houses. So why exactly did I call this a Roman villa? Come and take a look inside and you'll see exactly what I mean. So this is St. Os Oswald's, an early English Gothic church, I think dating from the 13th century, so 1200s, and there is a whole wealth of things in here to show you. And as I say, it stands in the middle of nowhere now, serving absolutely nobody. First thing here, 
Three Kings, a painting on the wall there. That painting is from 1340. That's absolutely insane. That's 700 years old, a painting just there on the wall. And behind me there is another painting, apparently that's St. Martin's of Tor. A little bit difficult to identify, but apparently it has been. Not sure of the date on that one. And then there's another painting just up here. That was done in the 1500s, I think, St. Christopher, the patron saint of travelers. Now, why did I say Roman? Well, Roman because in the corner just over there, they found or had for quite a while a Roman mosaic from the villa that this was built on top of. Sturdy foundations. Um, and well, a great setting for that as well. I think now the mosaic is now a Soren Sester Museum, so good a place for any. Oh, so, Whitford, that broadly translates, I believe, into Wivig Ford. Uh, ford by the willows and that kind of adds up quite well if there was a fording point down there maybe that could be traced back to the romans if this was a roman villa south facing down towards the valley there and of course at the other side of the hill there you've got Aikerman street the main roman road perfect all adds up but what doesn't explain why there's no one here today and of course why this settlement became abandoned in the first place it's an absolutely gorgeous setting so a common belief is this area, in particular this village, did suffer greatly from the Black Death 1348. And it was said that the two thirds of the population was wiped out. There was something else in this area, which is worth of note. Now just to the northeast of me here was the start of a forest called Witchwood Forest. And it was said to be one of the largest in the country at the time. The forest was described by the Board of Agriculture in the early 1800s as filled with poachers, deer stealers, thieves and pilferers. So maybe that gives you an idea of the few hundred years prior to that period and maybe this area was perhaps a dangerous one and the population never really recovered from the Black Death and uh, that way there you had the dark and mysterious forest of Witchwood. So I'm looking for the abandoned settlement of Wheatfield, derived from the name of Whitefield, which came from the ripe crops of the Anglo-Saxons in the fertile lands around here. And I say I'm looking for the village, I might be right in the middle because I feel like I'm walking up some kind of significant holloway and there's earthworks all around us. More importantly, there's something stood there right in the middle all by itself. So Wheatfield, dates as far back as the Doomsday Book and obviously perhaps before. And uh, well, the chapel here, that dates to around 1200 AD. So the village itself that probably surrounded us here, well, now there's absolutely nothing. But for three or 400 years thereafter, this chapel was built, well, it was a thriving community. 30 acres of land were, were worked here. It even survived the Black Death because 1377, there was about 60 or 70 inhabitants here that were again working the land. So what exactly went wrong? Why is there absolutely nothing left surrounding this really rather gorgeous old chapel? 1505 and things were about to change, John Streetly, Lord of the Manor here, decided to enclose well, maybe 160 acres of land here and he effectively made 54 people workless and homeless overnight. What's really sad about this chapel is you can't really get in. They've bolted all the gates and made it very inaccessible, which is a really sad thing because it's a really beautiful place. Really peaceful and I'd love to show you some of the um, original features. I think there's two features which remain. I think one of the archways is original. The population did dwindle on thereafter, but really nothing uh, like what was here before. So 
So back to Astwick, back to North Oxfordshire. In fact, I might even have crept into Northamptonshire, but either way, I'm on the borders. Now, really is worth visiting this place for a number of different reasons. Not least, the walk there takes you past these gorgeous old barns marked on the map. Our journey has got another 500 yards or so across a couple of little valleys or brooks to the abandoned settlement of Astwick and the rounding off of today's adventure. What's in those woods? Here we are. So this is a treat and a half. All around me here in this field now, which has just got a handful of sheep in it, it is absolutely covered in earthworks. And I think I'm walking up now one of two Holloways in the medieval abandoned settlement of Astwick. Now the two Holloways could possibly indicate that there was two different eras here of, uh, of, of occupation. There's an old stream, I think, running down the middle there. On the south side of the village over there, you've got the ridge and furrow. And here you've got all sorts of platforms indicating where the settlements would have been. Now this was mentioned in the Doomsday Book uh, 1086 and it said Land of Walter Flanders. He was obviously the landowner here. I wonder if that's like an old well. Look at this. Very circular um, earthwork there. Yeah, so as far back as the Doomsday Book, this place was mentioned. Then on for the next 500 years for various poll taxes, 1510. There were 15 uh, houses here. And um, yeah, really gives you a sense that the earthworks really help you sort of appreciate what was here before. But we did allude to something else at the start of the video. And that was, of course, what was in the trees, the small wooded copse to the north of the village. And that will help us perhaps understand this one even more. So Astwick, it's difficult to draw a conclusion here as to the cause of its demise. Antiquarians have mused for decades, all to no avail. But one thing is for sure, the landscape a thousand years ago would have been very different to the one we see today. The presence of what was in those woods suggests just that. It's not often you find one of these, probably a thousand year old uh, moat with the embankment in the middle. Now there's no evidence to suggest that there is or was a building inside it, but it's highly likely there was. And if someone did some archeological work, they'd probably find the thousand year old manor house stood there, or at least the, the foundations. I was trying to find a way across, but by guess by nature of what it is, there's some deep water there. Um, hidden away in the woods here on the north side of Aswick abandoned village was this and likely the house, the manor house that controlled the population here. Absolutely fascinating. It's often the case that these abandoned settlements are difficult to find and plot and nearly always quite a walk from any direction. But for me, that's what makes them even more evocative. The peace, the tranquility in these landscapes really helps appreciate what was here. But why are they no longer here? What links all these places? At least half of these 10 or so that we found, they were hit hard, it seems, by the Black Death of 1348. And it really serves as a stark reminder of how fragile human existence is. The people that lived in these settlements and the living the life they do as we do today, well, they had no concept of what was around the corner for them. The history of these abandoned settlements isn't really just a distant tale. It should really carry a lesson for us. Perhaps the biggest of those is the value of community. In these silent remnants, these abandoned earthworks, we can find connection to the past and perhaps source of inspiration for the future. The lost villages here are more than just historical artifacts. I hope you enjoyed the video as much as we enjoyed making it. And when I say we... Hello! Just in time to say goodbye. <laughs> Just in time to say goodbye. <laughs> Um, yeah, if you enjoy watching these videos and you want to see a bit of behind the scenes content with me, Rebecca and I kind of waffling all day long about what we're doing and where we're going, yep. um, as a little bonus, you can sign up to our Patreon or our YouTube members for that behind the scenes content. Yep. In the meantime, we'll see you uh, in the next video.